first of all y'all i got a theory about uh, kirsten she really is too much kirsten is really too much and one of the things when i was watching her and i was saying to myself a person who is this picky who picks out uh, everything the way she's describing herself and all this we already know at the end of this uh, episode she don't like a uh, shack we kind of got a little hint of it beforehand we was all really scared and she had told her girlfriend if she gives the man her cheek when she goes in for the kitchen she does this that's a sign that she doesn't like him or she's not attracted to him and we saw at the end of this episode that when they finally got to the altar that's how she greeted him or that's how she ended it with this and this is what I want to say about uh, Miss Picky Kirsten. I think Kirsten is um, hiding some things, y'all. Because there's a lot of things that went on in this episode that for me I didn't add up. And when I say hiding something, I'm saying things where you want, us, you want to lead us to believe one thing about you, but it's really a whole other thing about you. This is what I'm starting to see about Kirsten. Because, you know, I've run into a lot of picky people in the world, people who nitpick on everything, this not perfect, this not perfect. And a lot of times those real, real nitpicky person, people, they have a need to be perfect and they think they're perfect. And so then they nitpick on you so that you can have the pressure of being perfect and you then are so busy trying to fix all the things about yourself because they're picking on you that they don't have to do anything about themselves. And let me tell you, this is what I said about a lot of people who come on this show, is that people have told them things about themselves and those things don't work in relationships. But instead of them correcting those things about themselves, what they decide they want to do is come on Married at First Sight and say, I'm not going to work on none of the stuff about me, Kirsten. I'm not going to work on none of my pickiness, none of those negative traits about me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come on Married at First Sight and I'm going to pray to the Lord, and then I'm going to pray to God, the Lord, and I'm going to pray to the married at first sight of producers and tell them, oh, no, just give me exactly what I want. I don't want to do no changing. I don't want to be less picky. I don't want to be less superficial. I don't want to be us having to stop worrying about things that really don't mean anything in marriage for a long-lasting marriage. I want to keep doing what I've been doing for 32 years or however long a whole old she is or how long she's been dating and i want you to accommodate who i am all my bad traits that's kirsten and i'm gonna say this about her some of her stuff ain't adding up okay one thing that really was starting to bother me about kirsten is when she says um i have a master's degree and i have a bachelor's degree well first of all kirsten we already know that once you say you have a master's or you have a bachelor's <laughs> Who says it in that order? Don't most people say I have a bachelor's and a master's? But no, Kirsten says I have a master's and I have a bachelor's. And to me, that, that feels like, it feels showy. Then I remember when we were first watching the Married at First Sight uh, matchmaking special. And Pastor Cal came in to tell Kirsten she was going to get married. And Kirsten was in the kitchen uh, baking cookies at her open house. I said, is this what they do in Tennessee? Uh, put cookies in the oven so that the house can smell like chocolate chip cookies. So when you walk in the house, you want to buy the house because the house feels like home. Maybe this is a Southern thing. But then I started saying, well, no, that's also sort of fakish to me. That's sort of phony to me. It's sort of like an outside presentation. And then I started thinking, well, once she told us she had a bachelor's and a master's, a master's, I started thinking, well, why is she a real estate agent? This is no shade to real estate agents, okay? But you don't need a bachelor's and a master's degree to be a real estate agent. And especially not if you're selling single-family homes just down the street in the neighborhood. Now, maybe if you're selling commercial real estate and you're selling, um, you know, a multi-million dollar a commercial buildings, they do like people who have degrees and master's degrees in business. But a curse's degree is in some other type of a category that don't have nothing to do with real estate. This really, I'm telling you, there's so many things. I'm going to get into it, y'all. But I got so many red flags with Kirsten that makes me realize that her pickiness is also to cover up some things I think are about going on with her. And I think they're going to get exposed. But let's go ahead on. I'm not going to stay on it too long. I'm going to get into it later on a little bit more as we go by. But there's some things about her, y'all, 
that really are some really really red flags she's so busy uh she probably gonna be so busy pointing out the red flags on Shaq, who i like she gonna think we're not gonna see her red flags but we're gonna see them you know this uh uh youtube world instagram world whatever we're gonna see them red flags uh-uh she gonna be more than a pretty smile and a big booty okay i'm telling you it's gonna be more than a pretty smile and a big booty uh, she ain't gonna fool us she is not gonna be able to fool us out here so we also found out a little bit more about Shaq, and i mean um i don't know if you guys watched the um uh, after party i watched it as well i'm gonna do a video on that but on the after party they switched it up a little bit this year they, it was an hour long last year it was only half an hour and this time what they did was they did a uh, three females in the beginning so it was kirsten it was Nicole and it was Jasmine in the first part, half of the after party. And then the second half of the after party was three men. It was Shaq, Eris, and Matt. And so Kirsten was on the first half of the, uh, the after party and um, uh, goodness, Shaq was on the second half. And we learned a little bit more about Shaq. First of all, we learned about Shaq. He, he kind of explained how he got that scar on his hand. Everybody's been talking about the scar on his head. Um, he talked about how he was in a really, really, really bad car accident. He was young. His whole family, a really a bad car accident. And that's what happened. And I believe that's how he got the scar on his head because it was a really, really, I don't think anyone uh, passed away or died in the car accident, but it was really a horrific accident. He also talked about how he became such an ac academia, got into academia and became such an academic. And I really could relate to his story because what he talked about was because he, um, wasn't able to be in sports and things like that he tended to focus more on uh, academics because that's where he spent a lot of his time remind me of like my childhood i was an uh, asthmatic child when i was young so i couldn't do a lot of sports i was that that kid that couldn't do a lot of pe couldn't do a lot of sports because i had too much wheezing and bronchitis and everything else i was that kid sitting on the bench when everybody else was running around the track field um but it is but i understood it because that is exactly what happens once you don't have that sort of physical play i became i came to love to be a spectator of sports so that's why i love football i love sports i mean take me to any type of sporting event i love it because i got used to that as a child being a spectator not necessarily participating and i used a lot of my free time for studying so i really could relate to uh Shaq in that way and i could see how that could have developed a lot of his a lot of uh his personality and let me tell you i really have grown to like Shaq on this on this show um, he is definitely showing a sensitive side to himself. He also told a heartwarming story about how in this episode, you see how he was crying with his grandmother. Well, guess what? That ended up being the last time that he saw his grandmother. His grandmother uh, made it to that wedding um, on her last leg. She was already suffering from a kidney disease. And he had told her, he didn't tell her anything about the wedding and how he was going to be getting married at first sight. He didn't want to alarm her or worry her since she was already ill. So the way she came to the wedding was she was thinking he was getting an award. And that's how he, she, he found out that she, she found out he was going to get married. It was such a heartwarming story. I was crying over that story. But it ended up being the last time that he saw her. So one of the reasons why he was crying so much when he saw his grandmother was because he was really close to his grandmother. And I think it was just such a heartwarming to see uh, her there uh, supporting him. So sometimes y'all don't know the backstories here. But I have really, really grown to uh really like Shaq and let me tell you he really wants this wedding Shaq is really starting to remind me a little bit of Miles I don't know if you guys remember Miles from Karen and Miles but I think he really 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 wants a wife and he uses a lot of language like I don't know what I'm gonna do if this doesn't work out and remember Shaq mentioned that he had gone to therapy and I wouldn't be surprised if there's some history of uh, maybe it may be a little bit of depression in, in Shaq's life because I can also see a little bit of sadness in him. And he talks about it over and over again of how lonely he is, how lonely he is, how lonely he is. And at first I was like, I love to see a person admit that they need a person in their life. Some people walk around with so much bravado. I don't need nobody. I don't need nobody. I want somebody, but I don't need no one. I really love when a person says, no, I want, I, it's more than I want someone. I need someone in my life because I'm lonely and I want a partner. So I was really happy to see him say that. And there's another person saying the same thing, which is Eris, which I'm going to get to that too. 
But I really like the idea that he honed in on what his real need was in his heart. And he said, I need a woman. And um, I'm just really afraid that if this doesn't work out, I uh, hope he doesn't uh, go into any sort of type of depression because I think that he is a deep feeler. I think that he's a deep thinker. And I think he's going to give his absolute all to this wedding. And then you come along and you pair him with this superficial Kirsten who doesn't care anything about else about looks and uh, baking cookies. And did y'all hear that part on the episode when she was uh, complaining about the girl at the um, uh, strip club talking about uh, you don't need to be uh, going to no strip club. You need to be at home uh, what rubbing your man's feet, cooking dinner, rubbing your man's feet. Uh, first of all, uh, now that I know about Kirsten, who really believes that Kirsten is going to be rubbing some man's feet? I, I don't believe it. Picky Kirsten, I mean, his he would have to be a foot model. His feet would have to be a perfectly everything perfect no calluses no corns no rough edges no none of them toenails you know women them toenails will men be scratching in the bed uh-uh couldn't be a none of that because she's not gonna be rubbing on no less than perfect feet that's what i mean about kirsten she says a lot of stuff to make you think but she ain't that girl kirsten is not that girl and let me tell you the other thing i, I saw about kirsten what's going on with her family what is going on with her family? Now, when Kirsten was getting married for this wedding, they did this, made this big dot deal that her mother couldn't be found. First of all, I was like, why? where is this mother? It's her daughter's big day. Where is the mama? And if you noticed, when Kirsten was calling her mother, the phone would go to like, like the phone was disconnected. It wasn't like the phone went to voicemail. It was like the phone went to, dis, like it's disconnected or her mama blocked her because we all know don't no phones do that no more if, if the person don't answer the phone it just goes to voicemail but then i thought you know what i think that was some editing y'all i think that that little sound of sorry the person you're trying to call it um can't be reached at this time i think that was editing i think that really when kirsten was calling her mama it really was going to voicemail and what they did is they put a voice over over that that's what i think I, otherwise i was saying is this mama's phone disconnected this is what i was thinking i was like is this mama flaky is her phone disconnected well she didn't pay her bill did she block her daughter I, my mind was really racing y'all but now that i think back i don't know what do y'all think i think that they put a voice over on that phone and that really what was going on was that phone or went to voicemail but nonetheless the mama wasn't answering <laughs> nonetheless the mama wasn't answering and the mama um, did eventually show up to the wedding late, which I just thought, I don't know, a mama late to her daughter's wedding. I just, some of this makes me start to think that is Kirsten really as close to her family as she tries to say that she is. This is what's starting to come up because I'm not, the, the um, actions aren't meeting what she's telling me. Because um, my mama would be a front and center at my wedding uh, for first to arrive. Second of all, that daddy. Kirsten keeps telling us she's a daddy's girl. I'm a daddy's girl. I'm really close to my daddy. Your daddy didn't even show up to your wedding. What what father or daughter who's a daddy's girl's daddy would show up to a wedding? And let me tell you, it's not because he's out of town or out of state and didn't have no money for no plane ticket or he couldn't get there. No, he lives in Nashville, she said. And the reason he didn't come to the wedding was because he didn't want to take a COVID test. Okay, now I know there's a lot of COVID deniers out here. People don't want to take the vaccine. We ain't talking about the vaccine. We're talking about that he didn't want to take the COVID test. That's why he didn't show up for his daughter. I'm going to tell you this. This is what my gut says. Oops. This is what my gut says. A Kristen likes, Kirsten likes to paint a picture that ain't the picture. Now, what for whatever reason, that father didn't show up to her wedding. That's his reasoning. That's their family's reasoning, whatever. But I'm going to tell you this. Uh, she ain't a daddy's girl. Because when you are a daddy's girl, because I'm a daddy's girl, there is no way. All you men uh, that are your girls or your uh, pride and joy, I don't care if, my, if um, I was marrying a Labradoodle. My daddy would show up and he would be there on time. 
He may not have liked who I married, but there is no way as much as my father's past me, see that as much as my father loved and cared for me and I was daddy girl, no way he wouldn't show up for my wedding. That's how I know she ain't telling the truth. And let me tell you, on the after party, uh, even, uh, I'm about to call her Rudy, but Keisha Knight Pulliam kind of called her out on it a little bit because Kirsten also told the story about when she was finally about to tell everybody she was getting a married on a married at first sight. Um, Kirsten said, well, how did your daddy think, of, think about it? And she said, well, I called my father. And I, she's like, please said, what you mean you called your father? She goes, yeah, I called him to tell him I was getting married on married at first sight. She goes, what do you mean? Your daddy's out of town? He goes, no, he's in Nashville. So even Keisha and I pulled him and said, wait a minute, you're daddy's girl. Your daddy lives in Nashville, right with you. And when you were about to get married, you called him instead of going to his house? Nope, don't make no sense. Not believing it, not believing it. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, this is all a facade with Kirsten. We're going to find out a lot. I bet you there's going to be a lot of her pointing fingers about what's not so great about Shaq. She's already told us, I think on the after party, how she wanted a man with muscles. Okay, so we're starting to hear this now too. She want a man with muscles. She didn't want no bald man. She want a man with a nice low cut hair. She's very, very particular. And I don't even know why particular people come on married at first sight. Why do they come on this show? It is irritating. I really hope she don't irritate me this season, but I'm starting to see. And let me tell you something else about Kirsten. I'm wondering, I said, you know, she really is a pretty girl. And although we know that um, we can see some of the things why there will be some men who wouldn't want to be with Kirsten because one is she's too particular and she's superficial. And I'm thinking that this is even more than what's kept men away from her. She's talking about she pushed them in and went, men don't want to be with Kirsten. Nobody wants to be with a person, whether a woman wants to be with a man or a man with a woman, where nothing you do is good enough. Uh, call Stasha <laughs> from last year. Nobody wants to be with a person where nothing you do is good enough or anything you do is always going to be labeled as a mediocre. No one wants to be married to that. Uh, not at all. And to be honest with you, you know, Kirsten's over here talking about she wants a man with muscles and this man with this tight body. Now, I, I think she's very attractive, but something else tells me that Kirsten, does it look like she might have been a really big girl maybe, maybe, maybe a year ago? Does it look like she slimmed down? Does it, does it look like to you that maybe before she was a lot bigger? Because this is another thing I'm thinking about. I don't know how Kirsten has gotten to the point where she nitpicks over everybody because most people realize, hey, I've got flaws, I've got things. So the last thing I want to do is start nitpicking on you because guess what? Um, I really don't want you nitpicking on me. I believe that Kirsten has had some insecurities in her life growing up. I'm telling you, it's probably around that daddy, not good enough for that daddy. And it might be some issues over maybe... Um, Maybe there was some body uh, um, non-positivity when she was younger. And now she's in a different place. And now she decides uh, she's the whole package. So she wants everything because she got a master's and a bachelor's. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I got a lot of speculation going on. I know, I know, I know. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I'm just sharing with you where my mind is going right now. But we got 20 episodes and I'm going to figure it out. But let me tell you, the red flags and the alarms with this woman is uh, going off 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 now Shaq you know I'm gonna tell this about Shaq that suit he picked for the wedding uh, it was too small I don't know why he picked that I mean I know you want a fitted suit but he really could have let that suit out just a little bit it was really a little bit too tight for me um, I felt like in the front it should have came a little bit closer to closing I don't know he got a different style uh, a style than I do he reminds me of some of these basketball players who you know, in the NBA, they like to uh, have these sort of more flamboyant styles and, you know, as he calls it, a dapper Dylan. Okay, his bow tie had the little feathers on it and stuff. I know people out here are trying to say that he um, bats for the other team. I don't believe that. I believe that he's just a guy. He's just a metrosexual guy, which there are a lot of guys like that. Um, I don't get any other type of vibes that he somehow uh, wants a beard or he wants to be uh, with a man. I, I'm not I'm not picking up on none of that. And I really, um, I mean, I've seen different types of men. There are a lot of men 
who are into fashion and dressing, just like people said about a Nate last year and different things. It doesn't mean that. And I really wish uh, a lot of women wouldn't classify men like that just because they're not showing all this rough ruggedness and toughness and thugness. It really is a hurting women out here because when men hear that, especially younger men, then what they do is they say, well, I got to be the bad boy so a girl knows for sure that I'm not some type of, you know, guy hitting for the other team. You know, you're really shaping it when, you, when, when, when young men hear that type of stuff where you're called those terms just because you, you like to dress nice or you like to do certain things or you have an accent, a southern accent. I don't know. I'm, I'm really not into that. And here's the other thing. I was wrong about the fact that none of these people are from a Tennessee because Kirsten is from Tennessee. And we find out a lot of the other girls are actually from Tennessee. They're from Memphis and um, other areas. Maybe not from Nashville, but they're from other areas. Now, we know Memphis and Nashville are two different cities. I've been to Memphis. And let me tell you, I haven't been to Nashville, but I, I think I know it's two a different completely cities. Same state, but different, different cities. So some of these people might be from Memphis. <laughs> They bring in that Memphis personality, not that Nashville personality. Uh, but we're going to see. We will see. But we're going to see. We're going to see what's going on. But I'm telling you right now, my red flags about cursing all over the place. Because even though that daddy didn't show up, she also didn't have anyone to walk her down the aisle, not one man. And let me tell you something. Kirsten claims she's so traditional, the church. But then next thing you know, she's talking about six, seven inches, what she wants. Um, you know, she's up in the, um, uh, what is it? The bachelorette party, which was a bachelorette party going wild. The man is flipping up in the sky. Uh, she almost broke that damn man's back. <laughs> he was picking her up like, oh, this is a much heavier load than I thought. But let me tell you, she walked down that aisle by herself. And this is another thing I said, you don't have any male figure in your whole family, uh, that you that you enjoy, you trust, you love, that could have walked you down the aisle. Now, I know there's a lot of women who want to walk down the aisle by themselves, like Morgan last year when she wanted to prove she's independent. Uh, but that don't, that's not what Kirsten is billing herself as. Kirsten is billing herself as this traditional woman, baking cookies, rubbing a man's feet, a cooking, and uh, going to be catering to a man and all these other kind of things. And she's so traditional because she wants him to be the provider and all this. And then she's going to do a non-traditional thing like not walk herself, walk her own self down the aisle. Don't believe it. And you don't have any other male figure in your life. No man around you in your whole life that will walk you down the aisle. I'm telling you, the story a person is telling is not the real story. And then they talk, when they were telling that story, and when they were sitting around to my when's the last time you had sex? I guess they asked this of everybody, uh, revealing their personal information like that. Uh, but Kirsten admitted uh, the last time she had sex was just like, a, uh, what was it, a month ago? <laughs> it was just a month ago before she got married. So all these people, I know they're going to be on Aries because Aries said he got had sex the night before. But listen, this picking process for this married at first sight, for what I've been told, goes on for a long time. People are talking about you're in this process sometimes for three or four months. So a lot of these people have had sex after they apply to marry at first sight. So here's Kirsten, the church girl, the one that's going to cater to her man, the one that's going to be rubbing feet, the one that wants the male as the provider, all these different types of things. And here's the girl getting flipped up in the club with her uh, JJ on the man's face. Um, she too was out here still having um, um, unmarried premarital sex, right? Nothing wrong with it. Listen, I'm just telling you that the stories don't add up. Who is the real curse? I'm going to tell you, uh, she's going to be doing a lot of finger pointing about what she doesn't like about Shaq. And in the end, I think there's going to be a lot more revealed about her. Hope not. Hope not. Because I sure like to be for the ladies. But I'm, I'm starting to figure that this might not be an area. And let me tell you something. I am going to move. This is where I'm changing my mind on them. I said that I had a thumbs up on them and I had to see and I had to wait until I see if she was going to like him. And unfortunately, y'all, I'm going to have to move them from the thumbs up to the thumbs down because I don't think that Kirsten is reformed. I don't think Kirsten came in here saying before I used to be picky and that has held me back in dating. And so now I want to be different. I want to be open. No, I see a girl that has is, dub, is doubling down on the same behavior of why she's single, she's doubling down on it even more. So she's not coming in here trying to be a different person. 
She's coming here trying to be the same person and she's praying to God and she's praying to the Lord and she's praying to these Emerita First Sight producers that instead of me having to do all the change, I want you just to give me what I want. Horrible, horrible strategy. So uh, they're moving from the thumbs up to the thumbs down category. Sorry, y'all.